Hello and welcome back to Kin in Line. This is chapter 16, and as you can see, I've got a whole lot more uh, pages of drawings on the table. I'm now out of art school. It's just gone the start of July 1979, and I've been conscripted into the South African Defence Force. Took a train from East London around Lesotho and down through the Drakensberg to Ladysmith, where I was to do, I think it was three months, uh, basic training at 5 SA Infantry Battalion. Uh, wasn't at all happy, and I didn't even pack any drawing e equipment at all. You know, I was so down and out about the whole thing. However, when we got there, we were issued with these little uh, notebooks, A45, I think they are, um, which we were meant to uh, record, may take notes of whatever they told us. However, I soon turned these things, I had a pen obviously, and I started using them to do drawings of the people I was in the basics with and the places. So, for instance, uh, and so what I did actually afterwards is I thought I'd make a little picture book, much like I'm doing here, but actually try and produce a book of drawings. So I dismembered some of these notebooks, unfortunately, um, and I was going to try and have this published, but obviously the timing was pathetic. <laughs> no one was interested. So these, a lot of these pages have, have taken out and sort of they're in those piles separately. So I've managed to accumulate some of them. And this is a guy whose name was Bruce Goldie and he was from Pretoria. I think I, you can see I've sort of got onto a phase now where I'm post art school and, and just drawing for the sake of it, which is obviously important. Um, it's going to be a schlep to get through these notebooks because they're in a sorry state. But let's have a go. Um, so here are a couple of characters. Um, yeah, I mean, what a treat for an artist to be suddenly in amongst all these people from all over the country um, and you're able to just draw them. You know, these were models gifted to me by the SA Defence Force. <laughs> and really, it was all sorts of characters. I mean, this guy really didn't look like he was up to it. But, you know, sometimes they surprised you. So... Here we've got a guy who looks almost Chinese working on his webbing. I'm afraid I'm unable to adjust this, uh, show it otherwise. But this was a, t so in basic training we were about eight in a tent. And here's a chap asleep. You can see the sort of tent around the back there. And the steel cupboard. So that was basically what you were given a steel cupboard, a, a sort of steel bed with a foam mattress. And then you, yeah, making that bed was always part of the whole thing. Um, so these drawings are pretty randomly dispersed. But here's a little landscape that I did during what was called euphemistically a route march and um, I believe that little church was kind of taken over by the military in this area and very sad because I mean a picturesque sort of setting in the foothills of the Drakensberg. Um, standing guard was another thing that was a bane you know you started standing guard soon after you you arrived and it was two hours on, four hours off, two hours on, four hours off. So the first shift was from 6 till 8 p.m., then 8 to 10, 
So, so in an evening, you could do the 8 to 10 shift and the 2 to 4 shift, which isn't, it doesn't do much for your sleep pattern. Um, yeah, and that's a Coke bottle, which I think was filled with oil for, for your weapon. Your, we were issued with R1s, um, the sort of automatic, semi-automatic rifle, which was quite a powerful thing. I think it could hit a target from a thousand meters with some ease. Yeah, it was a very quick sketch of a chap with full kit. I don't know where his rifle is, but on a route march. So yeah, just a very, you know, I would have been encumbered with the same stuff, webbing and sleeping bag, etc. Yeah. So um, I think those are the Drakensberg mountains behind and uh, just a tree in the foreground. Yeah, in fact, on one occasion, we, we couldn't see the berg from, from Ladysmith for the first few weeks. And then the, it snowed on the mountains and the whole, uh, the air just cleared because it was always misty up to the north. But when the air cleared, we could get a lovely view of the mountains actually covered in snow. I don't know if this shows it, but I've got some other drawings elsewhere with snow covered mountains. So we were very much in the foothills and I tried to capture that every so often. But really sketching from life remained my most, because uh, there were so many people around, I mean, one just had to do it. That It was a way of whiling away hours and hours of time in the army. I mean, two years. Imagine how many drawings I did. I think this is the first... Uh, image we get of a chap with a beret um, and it, yeah at this point I think we had a spring buck on the uh, on the beret up there I think they called it a bulky or a, I don't know everything was just about in Afrikaans almost every command and I think there was one token day a week when they gave us English uh, sort of grudgingly but this was the uh, South African Severmach. But I hold no grudge against the people who did this. This was just part of history and, you know, one went through it and maybe we're richer for it. I mean, I certainly have a lot of drawings to thank for that. Thank that for a lot of my drawings. This chap was... Uh, lying down with his head resting on his sleeping bag or his uh, large uh, whatever that was in English during one of our route marches uh, another of the characters I uh, can't remember who this guy is And then, of course, when somebody's asleep, as most of the guys tended to do a lot of sleeping over weekends when they weren't being marched around and so forth, and then I'm able to sort of actually do like an object drawing. And here you can see a lot of attention to detail. Um, so I did... Uh, we had what they called church parade, or every Sunday they would bring in an Anglican minister. I was no denomination, but I opted to go Anglican for this. And this is the guy who came into the camp and chatted to us. I think this must be Mr. Goldie again, without his beret. Or <laughs> Here's a quick one. And another guy, I can almost remember this chap. Um, yeah, 
as you can see, I mean, I was still struggling here in these early days of the military. But then I think drawing is actually a perpetual struggle. You know, it, no drawing is guaranteed to be successful, even if you've been doing it for 40 years. Um, and it's in the struggle almost that the quality emerges. I mean, I don't mind the fact that that nose has been redrawn. It just makes it more interesting. It shows the struggle, and the struggle is what makes the drawing. So what do we have here? Some military... Yeah. Aids, aids in judging distance. Key range, average of unit, what's axis of fire or ox, axis of arc or something. Types of fire, oh, I couldn't stand all this stuff. Yeah, aim of weapon training, this is all the sort of stuff that I started filling this book with. And here I actually wrote a little poem, it seems about the mountains. I'd like to read it maybe sometime. Oh yeah, it starts here. There is a no man's land on a snow-covered mountain top. Yeah, one day we'll read this. It'll go down in history as yeah, war poetry or something. Anyway, must stop for now. Till next time. Cheers.